Scops, the Red Hot Underdogs, Drewy. Welcome to the Red Hot Underdogs. I'm Anzac and with me, live and free from Fiji, the ever incredible long contained, often imitated, never duplicated, and a little bit kind of bad quality and echoey. It's Drewy. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the podcast where it's not the size of the what right. Oh, I fucked it up. Not the it's side good. of the rise that wins the prize. It's the throb of the knob that does the job. Okay, can you say Maybe. that again? It's not the size of the rise that wins the prize. It's the throb of the knob that does the job. Uh, I thought you were going to do a bit of a Fijian kind of intro this time. Mate, I was on the spot and I even fucked up my intro. So yeah. there we go. I'm yeah. on Fijian time. Yeah. You're on Fijian time. Look at you. You've got a cup of tea. You've got a palm tree in the background. You've got that horrendous Hawaiian or Fijian looking shirt, which I love. Yeah. You're living the life. Living the life. And I've, I've locked my kids inside the apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Hey, <laughs> locked <it>. in. <laughs> I, that's, that's the way it should be permanently. Yeah. No, oh, I very good. I haven't, I haven't done that at all. That reminds yeah. me of that. Um, uh, Pete sent me a, a meme, you, you yeah. know, it was like, what did it say? Did he send it to you too? Oh, yeah, I'll do a podcast with my mate and, you know, second day of podcast <laughs> locked up, you know. The, the, yeah, yeah. I'm getting you. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Anyway, it's <laughs> been, it's it's been a sort of a quiet week after the goings on of the rugby league. Yep. Uh, after the Panthers won again for the fourth yeah. time. Yeah. But there have been a few little things happening yeah. in the world of sport. Rafael Nadal has officially ushered out the whole universe of the big three, having retired a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. So how, old, that's how, old, how old did he retire at? So Rafael Nadal is 38. Yeah. He turned pro in 2001. He won 22 majors. He won 14 French Opens, which will absolutely never be done again. An absolute alien on clay court. An alien. So, yep. A absolute player. alien. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next level, terrestrial level, breaking through the glass ceiling level, unattainable yeah. level. Unattainable. Uh, he won two Australian Opens. Two Wimbledon and four US Opens. And that ushers him out as being the second greatest player of all time with 22 majors, only behind the great Novak Djokovic with 24. And slightly behind him is most people's sentimental favourite, Roger Federer with 20. How old was um, Federer when he retired? He Was was he a year older? He was 39 or... Was he? Don't quote me on this, but I think he's roughly the same age. Yeah, yeah. And, Sorry. and yeah. dare I say, how old is, is Djokovic now? I have a feeling he might be about 36. Okay, yeah. So yeah. he's got a few years up his sleeve. I mean, you know, he could have 10 years up his sleeve, but a few yeah. years up his sleeve till he hits the, the age that Federer and Nadal retired at, which, you know, doesn't mean that he will, but... You know, like it's like um, yeah, yeah. He's not hurting for coin or lifestyle. He's yeah. doing it very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. And the other thing, which I totally forgot about this week, but I have remembered thanks to yeah. the media machine behind it. Yeah, yeah. Is the the palm tree? Well, yeah, mate. You're living the life, uh, which is is that the something... media machine behind me? The palm tree. The Mate, you're, you're living the living the life out there in Fiji, but yeah. something that's happening today, yeah, which is every bit as Australian as a single mum collecting her weekly wage at Centrelink, yeah, every bit as Australian as a meat pie with sauce, yeah, every yeah. bit as Australian as a route inside a panel van at oh. Cronulla Beach. Cronulla, it is. I've only been there. Bathurst. Yeah. Bathurst, 1,000. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that yeah. a weekend, is it? It's the Bathurst weekend, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. 
All right. Go, let's go let's, to the Mustang. It's not really a sport we talk about, is it? But I will say this. Yeah. Okay, over the years I've known some of the mainstay drivers who have been there for a long time, but just a good commentary on Bathurst. Car racing isn't one of my favourite sports, but if there is one event that I want to go to eventually, it is Bathurst. Yeah. There's nothing like sitting around a car track watching cars do 20 billion laps, yeah. getting third-degree burns by the Australian sun, yeah. getting absolutely sozzled by far too many drinks yeah. and waking yeah. up in Bathurst Hospital yeah. the next morning and asking the nurse what was the result. Yeah. Not of your condition, but of the race. Yeah. Your thoughts on Bathurst. What was the result? <laughs> and secondly, how, how did I get here? You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, that's got to be on our bucket list one day, Bathurst. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, um, mm. I mean, it's it's put, it's put Bathurst on the map, that race, hasn't it? It has. It has. But it's not particularly podcast friendly because with all the revving of the engines, yeah, uh, you really wouldn't be able to hear anything that we have to say. But yeah. that might actually be a blessing and not a curse. So is Bathurst finished or it finishes today, does it? No, it starts today. It's on it's, it's I think it's all probably already started. And it goes all as day. We speak. Right? Oh, it goes all day. Yeah. From about ten to about six or something. I've it's, been a little bit more interested in it since buying a Mustang, you know. Yes. Um, yes. But like you said, we you really got to go there. Um mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. I mean, it was such a big thing. You know, in Australia, the the you know you had the Holden people and you had the Ford people. Particularly, you know, when I moved to the country, you know, like yeah. in, in Wodonga in Aubrey, it was like number one, who's your Aussie rules team, and yes. and number two, um, uh, you know, are you Ford or are you Holden? Like that was a yeah, real yeah, yeah, yeah. big thing. It's definitely yeah. well, it definitely doesn't really exist anymore. I mean, does it? You know, were you ever a like you had you had your Commodore, but no. Look, I've never been a car junkie or somebody that really followed car sports. You yeah. know, they do tell me that the supercars has followed greatly throughout Australia. Yeah, but I've never really known too many people. Probably one person in my entire life who actually followed it religiously as a sport. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I guess it's kind of like an unemployed person on the weekend when they work out what day it is and they say, whoa, hang on, where have all of these people come from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. I'm unemployed and they've got jobs. It must be the weekend. Yeah. So yeah. you get that when Bathurst is around. Yeah. Where are all these people? Oh, yeah. they're motorsport fans. They're supercar fans. And they're unemployed. And they're unemployed. And they're probably unemployed, but having the fucking time of their life, yeah. not knowing their result, getting third degree bun uh, burns from the sun. Yeah. And as we discussed earlier, waking up in Bathurst Hospital, asking the nurse, what was the result? Not of my condition, yeah. but of the race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How to get here. Right. Oh, and uh, the, the other one is the summer nats. I've never been there, but that's a big one too that we should, you know, but that what they, I mean, this, Bathurst is a race. Summon Ads is mm. just Bogans doing burnouts. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, I went there in 2002. Oh, you've done yeah, Summon Ads, but you haven't I've done, done Summon Ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, summer, summer my... Summon Ads? Summon Ads. Summon Ads. Summon Ads, yes. Oh, is it so... Summon Ads? Oh, well, there you go. Okay. N-A-T-S. Yeah, okay. Summon yes. Summon Ads. With summon yes. Ads. And what... what... Stop. Well, like, Summer Nuts is probably a gay porn movie. Ah, uh, yeah. Summer done, Nuts. Yeah, yeah. Summer done, Nuts yeah, is what I went to yeah, in 2002. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and is that a race too, or that's not a race? I'm no, sure. that's just yeah. people showing off their cars and doing wheel spins and yeah. the real motor enthusiasts to see the latest and greatest souped up cars and yeah, any developments so, within the mechanical like world any, yeah any country town in australia you know yeah uh, when when I, I, I talked about how i lived in the country that's what people would do that they'd, they'd watch aussie rules and they'd um 
that go up and down the um the the main street, you know, in their mm. hotted up car was like the thing. It'd be you know, okay, yeah. you you drive up and drive back in your in your hotted up car. That's that's that was the highlight of the uh, Saturday night through to Sunday night. I mean, you know, All yeah, right. you know, All what, right. a, a week a week of it. Yeah. So good luck for everyone watching Bathurst. Yeah. Good luck for all the drivers. Good luck, Mustang. And good luck next week. I actually thought it was this week, but it's next week. Tim Zhu fights yeah. for somewhat of a redemption yeah. to get a world title belt oh, after yeah, losing redemption. last time really, out. This is redemption. It truly is redemption. You know, yeah. This is it. We spoke how, you know, how important this is for Tim. Like yes. that, that was a controversial loss. His last loss, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. for him to lose this would set him back years, oh. a year, minimum two years, back yeah. at the bottom of the 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 fish tank. Damaging. It's Damaging. it's all the balls directly on the line. So yeah. this is this is huge for him. So he'll go in as twenty four wins one. Loss and no draws, 17 wins by way of KO, fighting back from Murtazalia, who was 22 wins, no losses, no draws, and 16 KOs. It's a very winnable fight, but it's also a very dangerous fight because let me tell you, Murtazalia is no joke and he will definitely be there for the fight and the fire. And we will, probably won't get into it too much now, but Next week, definitely. Yeah, well, we'll um, do a post mine. But can I just ask him, why do you think he chose to vi fight Tim Zhu? You know, like... I think everybody kind of wants to fight Tim Zhu in some way because it happens, and it's a common thread throughout boxers who are the son of a famous father. Yeah, You want to beat the son of a famous father just yep. to throw a big spanner in the works of the family name, gives yep. you a little bit of bragging rights through yep. the father, even though the son isn't the father, okay. so on and so forth. It's a common thread throughout boxing. And and speaking of Tim Zhu's father, it was nice to see all those um, reunited kind of uh, news articles. That yeah. Came um, yes. So it's like... Whether you like it or not, or whether you want to know about it or not, you you know that this family is has broken up, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's nice to see when sport can yeah bring families back together. I mean, it's nice whatever yeah. reason, but particularly boxing, you know, when boxing yes, yes. brings families back together. Yeah. For everybody, you know. It is. I mean. Kostya Zoo went for another bit of Russian fluff a few years ago outside of his wife, yep. moved over to Russia. Yep. I'm not here to judge the guy. No, this no, is a lie. No. Things get fractured. It things is happen. what it is. Yeah, things happen. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and put on the reverend's collar and try no. and be a no. moral voice or a virtue no. signal. No. It is what no. it is. Yeah. Great to see the family. Family. Doing good things, even though it's fractured, it's kind of yeah. together through boxing and yeah. everyone lives yeah. in harmony again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But for next week, yes. I've, just on a side note, good luck for Tim Zhu next week. That's just huge. a quick one. Yep. Jai Opataya, Australia's best boxer. Best boxer. I know Zhu has the name, but Opataya is oh. the real deal. Best boxer. Yes. He won the. He won his cruiserweight fight this morning by knockout, six-round knockout of Jack Massey. Yep. He now goes up to 26 wins, no losses and no draws. So well done, Jai Apataya. And how was it? Keep how tracking. was that fight? Was it convincing? Well, I guess, like, was yeah, it very convincing. In the six or what, what happened in the sixth round? Oh, he dropped him. And it's just the same old for Jai Apataya. Yep. He's just a truck. He's a prime mover, and he's ready to do some damage. And for Australians, this is great. He yep. wants to pick up all the cruiserweight belts. And hopefully in the future, we'll have him as a serious heavyweight contender, which is something we haven't been able to say for a very long time for Australian boxing. I thought yeah. this win gave him all the belts for cruiserweight. Was I wrong? No, no. He's still got, he's still got a few to pick up. 
he, he's got to fight an Englishman called Chris Billum Smith, but we're oh. ready to go over there and absolutely smash the pom. And so, and he will get problem. that. Can can does I he come to so. England for that, or can he come to Australia for that? I'm not sure, but if I was a betting man, I'd say both him and Bill and Smith are going to want a bit of that flush Saudi money. Oh, that's yeah. Saudi money. That's yeah, pretty yeah. generous. I yeah. forgot even I forgot about our mate Turkey. Oh, Bella, Uncle Turkey, mate. Uncle, you ain't just yeah. filling up your ashtray with loose change. Yeah, yeah. You're actually hiring six truckloads of cash yeah. to put yeah. into a Kennard storage. Yeah, That's yeah. where they're going, yeah, Saudi. Yeah. You know what? Bugger, yeah. bugger you, England. Bugger yeah. Australia. Go straight to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Follow that man with a tea towel on his head. Yeah. Turkey. Uncle Turkey, Uncle Turkey Tur Allah Sheikh, Turkey. that's where the money is. Yeah, go straight so, there. Good on him. Yeah. In now, I just want to do a quick, not not massive review of the year in rugby league, but I yeah. do have a few little side awards yeah. to give to people. Not Obviously. necessarily, but and it's like for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yep. So this year's NRL. Penthouse to the Shit House yes. award goes to none other than the Brisbane Broncos yes. coach Kevin Walters. Yeah, good, good. What's he going to do? One year. Yeah, what's he going to do? Where, where's he going to go? Well, I, 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 it's a bad, it's an unfortunate story for him this year because one year you're literally four minutes away from holding up the Premiership trophy. Yeah, hero. And Nathan Cleary breaks your heart at the end. The next year, you're at home chowing down on a burnt piece of steak on a paper plate, yeah. unemployed as a coach, watching the grand final that you almost won. Yeah. Yeah. That's next level crazy okay, dimension. Open the door. Okay. Shut this door. Yeah. So the... The best of luck for, for Kevin Walters moving forward. Yeah, let me yeah. just show you what I'm dealing with. Yep. We're, yeah, dealing with a few. Yeah, can't get out. You're stuck in there. Welcome, so, Cuz. That's what you got to do. My, other, my yeah. other award, the Pinocchio Terrible Liar Award, oh, yes. goes from other than Josh Addo. Oh, yeah. Or should I say, Josh Addo Carr? Yeah, we yeah, for the... everybody knew he was lying, right? It was, yes. like, you know, yes. like, the, the, but <laughs> it's still the 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 whole thing can be summed up with what the police did. They they breath tested this guy who came back yeah. positive, right? Yeah, and then they said to him, "You can drive home." Yes. So out of every, like, he did the wrong thing, but the yeah. cops did a much more wrong thing by breath-testing someone, their job, and yeah. then letting him drive home and say, wait for your second result. That I mean, I actually think that the, the, the cops did worse than the... Uh, I You know what? And... I'm happy to disagree with you, and I'm not going to try and make you change your opinion either. I have a slightly different take on it. I think it's 50-50. I think they share the blame equally. I think Josh Adokar shouldn't be driving with that in his system, and I think it's equally yeah. horrendous that the cops let him go with that in the system. Worse, because so people are going to do that. You know, people are, and it, and you're right. It's worse that Ado Car does it because we, mm -hmm. you and I, have spoken in the past about yeah. rugby league players. Uh, yeah. You know, have had the worst reputation ever. Yes, like, and they're climbing, yeah. and it, it it is going from terrible to good. Okay. Yeah, 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 because, yeah. Because you know, now you work in a club. They they focus on you know education. They focus on you getting a job. Out, you know, when you when you you retire or when you you make it or don't make it beyond rugby league, and and then you got these muppets that do drugs and drive. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 not just bad for 
bloody the Bulldogs. It's bad for yeah. the league. It's bad for all of us. You know, it is. It is. Like, we we I joke think... about it. You know, we, yeah. we joke about cocaine and drugs, but you know, the truth is, we don't do drugs. We don't. No. You know? No, we don't. And and it's it's a sport where you don't want, you know, that associated. With um, you don't want that associated. Oh my goodness! It's Look a sport. She's, she's a skate. Hello. Yeah. But then the other thing is, hey, uh, how are you going? Uh, tell me. And then the other thing is about the part of the equation. He actually thought that he could get away with the situation. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. what happened is that. You'd usually be taken off to a caravan and they'd yep. do an extra test. Yep. They just did, all they did was a secondary test. So they did another test, but they didn't, it wasn't a test in as much detail, but would still give you the required result. And because they said you can drive off because we've got an armed robbery to go to, yeah. he thought that he could quickly get away with it. The worst part was Phil Gould sticking up for him in yeah. front of the media. Yeah. Not Phil Gould's fault at all. Phil Gould didn't know the situation, but yeah. Josh Adokar put him in that situation. So, you it, know. It, it really was one of the biggest stories for rugby yeah. this year. Like, like, like the worst was um, uh, the uh, Broncos going yes. from penthouse to doghouse. Uh, the yeah, other yeah, one, yeah. Adokar doing that. Yeah. Which, yeah, you know, yeah. doing that, but also then lying about it and then the cops mm. just letting him go. Like, Unfortunately, he went from bulldog to sniffer dog all in yeah. one go. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, bulldog, sniffer dog, you know? Yes. My next my next one is the uh, Back to the Mechanics Award, which goes to none other than Manly's Tommy Travojevic. Yeah. Does this guy ever get on the fucking field? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, how how many games did he play this year? I think it was an improvement on his regular seven. Yeah. Usually, in the last couple of years, he hasn't reached double digits. So, congratulations, Tom Travojevic. You reached double digit games this year. Yeah. I'm going to say something around about maybe seventeen games this year. Yeah. Which is a vast improvement. Not that we should be celebrating this, but at this time, when your Ferrari is acting like a Datsun 180B and you can't get it out of the freaking garage, it's always breaking down, you're going to celebrate double figures in a season from Tommy Travojevic. Not that you should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, here's a question. You know, mm. manly season's over. Yes. Manly season, successful. Yes, yeah. no, and why? Manly season was successful because they made the semi-finals. Yes. They hadn't done it in the two years previous. It's a step in the right direction. I think they'll be all the better for it next yeah. year. Penrith are losing players. Roosters are losing players. Manly are basically keeping the same roster. I'm not promising a preliminary final or a grand final. But, gee, it stands us in good stead if we can play similar football this year but improve on that football. So, yeah. I agree. Uh, I agree 100%. Yeah. It? So I want to give another award, the hey, gender of... Equality. podcast with Drew. Come on. Hey, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the... The team that promotes the je the best gender equality award yeah. goes to the West Tigers. Oh. You know why? Because the West Tigers finished last in the men's and the women's NRL. Oh. So they get the gender equality oh, award, showing that God. both the men and the women can suck equally. Oh, so God. unfortunate for the bloody West Tigers, but... Onwards and upwards. I hope that they go much better next year. What are your thoughts on the Tigers? Or well, you don't have many of them. Well, I'm I'm kind of happy they came last third year in a row. I reckon that's it's good for rugby league. You press that again, and you will be very sorry. You will be like a West <laughs> Tiger supporter. Okay. Yeah. 
They've just got to do it one more year and then they get to equal Penrith four in a row. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think it's anyone's happened. lost three years in a row, right? That's worth Googling. Like, No, yeah, I think that that's the first maybe. I would yeah. possibly say, oh, maybe, maybe not. The Gold Coast were pretty bad in the 90s. It's possible. Yeah. So the Mythbuster Award for me goes to the Blues this year. Yeah. They proved that. They too can have spirit. It doesn't just belong to Queensland and the Maroons. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> as and, much as everyone will have you believe that. Yeah. And the last thing, um, is that it or any more awards? Oh, I'm probably going to give the Greg Norman Choke Award. to. It wasn't a massive choke, but maybe Cronulla again. Ah. The, they're one win and nine losses in the. They could have. They could have worse. They could have. They could have. They could have. Yeah. They could have they, 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 they lost to the Cowboys. Yeah. They would have, you know, rightfully yeah. won that award hands down. Oh, hands down. So it wasn't as bad as what it seems because they did beat the Cowboys. They got smashed up pretty bad against both the Storm and the Panthers. No shame in that. They make the grand final. Still, one win and nine losses in semis in recent times. They're kind of like Greg Norman statistics. Yeah. 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 And do you have anything to add? Well, I was just going to mention about Fiji. And yes. um, I've spoke to the few of the blokes that work here, and I've mm. said I do a sports podcast, and um, and they're pretty excited. So I thought next week, um, yes. you know, I know it'll be a Tim Zoo conversation yeah. um because we'll do it after that fight right you know yeah yeah um, yeah but I sure invite a um a local um rugby union player you know yes like i did actually say to a couple of them you know do, do you play rugby do you play rugby and all of them mm. play rugby yeah all of them you know they play rugby but not league but rugby's yeah. i used to play rugby so yeah, yeah. and they love it yeah. but look an opportunity to bring on a, a local bloke and and talk a bit about um, rugby union in Fiji. Would that be cool? It'd be cool. I'm just, I I don't know. I'm kind of amazed you're talking to the locals, going, "Come on our podcast." Oh, I've already it's done like it. Their next yeah, door neighbour, and they, I know, I know all of them. You know, like, did they look like, at you strangely? Like, who is no, this no, guy? They, 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 they're like, oh, this guy, you know, he does the podcast and, they, you know, can we do it? Can I do it? Oh, my cousin, my sister's my cousin. You know, they must have a hundred cousins here. Oh, but can my cousin do it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your cousin can do it, you know, come on. So, yeah. He gets six, six views a six views a cycle, but no, nah, all Bye. good. Bye. All good. Sorry, what was that? Ten minutes? No, five years a cycle. Yeah, ten oh, minutes. Five, year, five years a cycle. That's, that's it. That's it. That's Beautiful. It. Um, and uh, how long do we have? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'll know when it's 10-minute warning, though. Yeah. So, you know, I've I've got a few other awards I want to give to. Okay. The, unfor the Unfortunate Photo Award goes to Latrell Mitchell. Yes. With his head above the white powder. Yes. Yes. You know. You know. We can't I prove he did it, but yeah. somehow I don't think that's sherbet sitting on the table. Yeah, you and um, it. I mean, these days, like, yeah. everybody's got a camera, everybody's got a video in their pocket. Like, with yeah. the what are you doing, yeah. Latrell? Like, I, I actually like him. Do you like Latrell? I've never, I like Latrell. I think he's a larger than life character. Yeah, on this occasion, he just fumbled his lines. Yeah, yeah, it's literally, phenomenal. like, yeah. <laughs> You know, he's young, he's talented, maybe he's a bit over emotional at times, but he's yes. a good player. He's yeah. a good player and he, he brings a lot to the game. He's yeah. got a lot of personality to the game. I, oh, 10 I minutes. Cuz 10 Beautiful. minutes. Thank Everybody you, Jeff. 10 minutes for, for Drewy. 10 minutes. Thank you. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Oh. I don't necessarily agree with his whole narrative that sports people need to be totally. good role models for yeah. people and for kids. Yeah. Like they can just live their life, but 
They've just got to be wary that they don't show cocaine or things on photos or yeah. bad vision of them, whether it be on video or photo. Well, true. That, All of that is point. out. The thing is, because everybody's got a camera in their pocket, yeah. you, you yeah. cannot do that. Yeah, do just that don't do stupid anyway. things like that. That's well, right. Yeah, like you can't do it at all. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sure yeah. it's always happened in the past. It has always happened in the past. But now, because everybody's got a camera phone, you definitely can't do it. Yeah, because I don't necessarily subscribe to this point of view that every sports player has to be a role model for the kids or other people. They don't, you know. If yeah, they want to be are. a good role model for the kids, the they parents are. should be that, you know. Okay, but they are, like, you know, like, whether they well, like yeah. or not, like, they are. I know, but I don't think that it should be demanded upon them to be. But all I'm are. saying is don't do stupid things person. like that. No, yeah. Drew, if you're a professional sports person, you are a role model. You are. Yeah, you are whether you like it or not. But, yeah. but I'm just saying don't do silly things to put yourself out there in a bad light. But what I'm saying is you don't need to take it that extra step further necessarily and take it on as a second job as being a good role model for everyone. Like, uh, just play your game and do your thing. And Yeah. I, know what I, think it's, I think it's an unrealistic expectation that everyone places on them, that's all. What's unrealistic? Uh, Not oh, but, cocaine. No, like... Obviously, like anyone else, they should do the right thing and not put themselves in a no, bad situation. Five minutes, JJ. But I'm saying is when everyone says, oh, you know, they they should help old ladies across the road and kick the football with blind you kids. They help old this. ladies across the road or across the road? Either or. Whatever yeah. way you want to put it. No, but no, listen. They you shouldn't, they shouldn't necessarily. The not across the road. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> walk with them across the road. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. they shouldn't, or, you know, they shouldn't necessarily be held to this standard where they've got to be in the spotlight all the time doing good things. Just play your game, entertain us. If you do in between that, then good. Just keep the bullshit out of your equation. But that's yeah. okay. Look, I'm not perfect. I'm an underdog. I've done plenty of stupid shit in my life. It just isn't shown to millions of people. Yeah. Uh, the Oh No Not Again award goes to the bloody Penrith Panthers. I don't want to see a fifth no. straight victory. We fourth was good. Fourth. But do you know History what? History making, no more. If If next year it's Panthers going for a fifth, against Storm, I I think you and I will probably be going for Panthers, right? No, no, I don't care who it is now. I don't care if it's Melbourne or Brisbane, no more Panthers, I'm done. Don't believe it. I do not no. believe that if it's Panthers it. fifth or Brisbane, you will be going for Brisbane. I do. Much as I hate Queensland no. and I hate Brisbane, I'm out of the Panthers industry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm out of the Panthers business. Just don't want to see it again. The obviously, as you know, the fucking up more leads in the KGB and the FBI award goes to Manly. Yep. Never have you seen front runners get run down as often or as badly as Manly. As a Manly supporter, you never feel safe. Yeah. Never feel safe. Yeah. So I think there are at least five games this year where Manly were leading by 12 points or more. And unfortunately, they just let other teams run them down like a freight train. It's a concentration situation. It's staying alert. It's a game management issue. They just seem to crumble. And ironically, they seem better coming from behind pardon the pun, yeah. than being in front. I mean, we all like to come from behind occasionally. occasionally. But they prefer it more than most. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, it, it's been a pretty big year of rugby league. Yeah. It's been a bit of a hangover now that it's done. Okay. The only other award I'll give is the Fresh Coat of Old Paint Award oh. by the Raiders. 
renewing Ricky Stewart's contract for five more years. Five more years? Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> crazy. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, okay, you made a grand final in 2019, but outside of that, let's be honest, you, know what? you haven't really been at the business end very often. No, but it doesn't matter because Ricky Stewart is loved. He is loved yeah. Yeah, by the supporters more than any other coach, and rightfully so. The guy's a living legend. He's so he's so animated to watch. He's so entertaining to watch. And and if I was a Canberra supporter, I'd be yeah. I'd be chuffed as well because that's five more years of very very entertaining. Post match interviews, particularly when the Raiders lose. Very well, strange. it would have it would appear that yeah. Raiders fans actually prefer to have him as a coach than they prefer to win games. Yeah, but but it's entertainment, truly. It's entertainment. He is extremely entertainment, entertaining. Probably the most entertaining coach. Arguably yes. Yeah. He is the most. Yeah. And the very, very least is Mr. Words himself, Wayne Bennett. Oh, yeah. He's a tool. But can I just get back to <laughs> how long has Ricky been coach of the Raiders for? That's a good question. Ah, oh, it would have to be about. It'd have to be going on about 10 years now, I'd imagine. And in that time, he's had one grand final appearance. Yeah. Yes. And yes. you know what? I don't think he's had that many more top eight appearances. No. I think he might have only had one or two Yeah. other top eight appearances. Seriously. For the yeah. most part, they've really, for the most part, they haven't even made the semis. Yeah. Yeah, like that's. I'm actually a bit surprised that they were given five years. Five years. Yeah, that's crazy. Five years. But <laughs> the guy I'm, can't do anything wrong. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm really, really happy. Yeah. Um, uh, other coaches get scrutinised. He's like, hey, don't worry about me. I'm Ricky Stewart. Yeah. They're just going to stamp my card for another five years, no matter what the fuck I do. Okay, but do you think in five years' time? Right in five years' time, good. You washed your hands. Tell Drew you washed your hands. In five years' time, is is Ricky? Gonna, I washed my hands. Um, is he going to not get into the 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 top eight for the next five years? And they're going to give him another five year contract? Like I think Ricky's. There? I I think Ricky Stewart's name has turned oh. into God down yeah. there. So yeah. he's God down there. They could get the next five wooden spoons and they go, oh, bugger it. Ricky, sign us up for another 10 years. We're going to sign yeah. you up for another 10-year contract this yeah. time. Yeah. The guy's untouchable. He's Teflon yeah. coated. He's, he's got yeah. heart. He's got so much heart, Ricky. Yeah, I, so much I heart. Prefer, I prefer to call him Slicky Ricky because Slicky he just Ricky. can't be touched. Slicky, Slicky Ricky. Ricky. Can you say yeah. that, Slicky Ricky? He cannot be touched. Drewy, yeah. one minute to yeah. go, so that's us. That's us from Hello. Fiji. Hello it from appears Fiji. to have worked. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. But next Sunday, book us in yeah. after the yeah. Zoo fight. Um, yes. We'll do that and, and I'll find a, a, a nice bloke to talk about the local rugby, yeah. rugby union in Fiji. I've got to give you credit. You've done very well getting through the storm of distractions there. Oh, my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> you know what? So many. I, I recommend going on a plane for three and a half hours with three kids, one being a two-year-old, is hell. That is hell. Yes. You know, I've been to hell and back 